Here comes the hot water. So we're putting uh, four liters of wood ash in each one. But chat, water. Did your water arrive? Yep, yeah, here, in here. Um, Hold up. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Put it in here. I usually went up the measuring sheet. And if you have a long stick, you can, you can uh, stir the barrels. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is boiling water, so it's too hot to add into the microorganisms. So I just want it to cool off for a minute. Which one's the microorganisms? Which one's the microorganisms? My starter. The milk and uh, yeast and. Uh, you can pour the rest of that biofertilizer into the. Yes. Yep. Oh, you put okay, a packet so of yeast in. Yeah. So that's the rest of the biofertilizer into the starter. Sorry? That's the rest of the biofertilizer yeah. into the starter. Maybe I mix while you put it in so it's cooling down. Which has got the milk oh, in it. Pour this right into here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, part of it anyway. Oh, instant yeast. If we had some non-soluble kelp, we would add uh, at least five kilos of non-soluble kelp to each one of these. So we'll do that later. You don't want to add it? We're just going to leave it right there for a few minutes. What? I'll just activate the yeast. Right, now, wine yeast is the same as the... Uh, is this poured in. Uh, wine yeast is uh, selectively is select. It's the same species that is bred to more tolerance of alcohol. So brewer's yeast, I believe, is the same species, but it's uh, it it ta it's um, gen genetically uh, selected to be more alcohol tolerant. So bread yeast might die at 2% alcohol and brewer's yeast might die at 4% alcohol. So we want bread yeast because we don't want too much alcohol. Half an inch? Half an inch. Let's stir it up. What's that you're putting in, Manu? Um, Rock phosphate. Rock phosphate. Mm -hmm. If you were going to buy an organic fertilizer, we would expect the quality of biofertilizer commercially uh, to be about $10 a liter. And here we're making 400 liters. So if we were buying that, um, it would be, it would be uh, a very expensive product. And how much do the materials for this cost, do you know, Manu? Is that, is that, is, um, was that in the 500 bucks? Yeah. Yes. But uh, but this costs about fifty cents a liter to make. Uh huh. Okay. okay. How much? Oh, uh, actually, it, it costs about twenty. It cost costs less than a hundred dollars to make two hundred liters. To make to make four hundred liters. Four hundred. Costs less than a hundred dollars to make four hundred liters. Mm -hmm. Twenty five cents for that. Okay. So now we're gonna pour the uh, the yeast into into both of them. Um, what do we have in here? Anybody tell us what's in here? Lots of water, cow shit. 40 liters of cow manure in each one. Yep. In each um, 200 liter drum. Um, um, rock phosphate. Rock phosphate, one liter in each drum. Mm. Uh, wood ash, uh, three or four liters in each drum. Uh, 250 grams of yeast uh, in That's each in drum, here. which is in here. Mm -hmm. There's 500 grams of yeast in there. No. Uh, I think, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, three liters of molasses in each drum, so there's six liters of molasses in here. And uh, we could add uh, ten liters of kelp to each drum, and that's my preferred way of making this, is because there's so many, there's such a great mineral balance in biofertilizer from the kelp. So then the microbes uh, in the cow stomach, which is in the cow manure. Uh, are very, very good at extracting the minerals out of kelp and putting them into solution. 
and at the end product uh, you will have uh, probably one species of bacterial dominating which would be a lactobacillus and you will have uh, some yeast in the mix but not a lot okay and when you open this up if it's amber uh, brown uh, they're all fine colors it'll smell strong but not putrid and putrid means it makes you want to vomit Strong might make you want to back off and not breathe it too much, but it's never putrid. Okay? If something goes wrong, it's almost always because the airlock hasn't worked. Okay, so be aware of that. Mm. Yeah. So pour half into each one. A liter in each one. Now, when you make biofertilizer, make sure that you don't put anything in here that you wouldn't feed a cow. So you don't put blood and bone in here, you don't put urea in here, you don't put uh, fish fertilizer in here, okay? This is uh, what you'd only put in here what you'd feed a healthy cow. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. Uh, now, now, you can use a rumen or a fermentation, the contents of a rumen or the contents of a fermentation chamber. Now it's very important as an inoculant, okay? So if you do kill a, a beast, kill a ruminant, which is a multiple stomach cow, you can carefully clean out the contents of its first stomach, which is undigested grass, which does not have a bad scent to it. It smells like silage. So that's a really good inoculant to add to this if you have it. Okay. So if you pick up dirt and rocks with your cow shit, is that bad in there? Uh, yeah, it's bad for your pumps. Okay. Right. So that you want to filter it out. Or but you, you want to keep the intake hose 100 mil off the bottom so you don't suck up anything. Or have a, a screen, filtering. a screen of some, a coarse screen on it. Okay. So that you don't suck it up. And the reason we filter out the, we screen the wood ash, is so we have less things that will clog up nozzles. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um, when I screen uh, the biofertilizer, I have some photographs, but where's my... Okay, that's as coarse a screen as you want to use, and the finer screens are the ones that are in the top of spray tanks, uh, typically in the tops of spray, like spray tanks there's a screen which is similar to fly screen wire. So then you don't plug up your filters. Oh, there is another thing here that we're going to add to it. Um, this is a, this is Ormus. This is minerals from the sea, from the seawater. Now I went to a, uh, a reef study in, in uh, where Java and Bali meet and there's multiple sea currents there. And the Smithsonian Institute was doing a study at the convergence of these currents and they found that 30 percent of the water was living was alive okay and had 70 different minerals in it and the photographs from the microscopes of these organisms were profound uh, ormus is from living seawater okay i don't know exactly how it's made but we're going to pour it into the biofertilizer now because i don't know the ph of this uh, and the concentration of this, I'm going to add water to it so I'm not at risk of, of killing any of the yeast or biofertilizer uh, or, or inoculant in there already. So I always dilute things when I put them in. It doesn't taste salty, it tastes very alkaline, so um, I'm going to have to check the pH in it, but it has that sort of astringent alkaline flavor to it. Where do you get that? Is that uh, you can look it up online. There's a couple of people that distribute it around here. Right. Uh, one of them is Steve Miller, the permaculture guy. It's a necessary ingredient. No, it's not. No, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a it's a mineral it's a it's a mineral plus. Uh, now on your compost, 
energetic. It's full of energy. Yeah. Now, on the compost, I like adding uh, 20 liters of seawater. So next time you go to the beach, bring collect it. one of these in seawater, bring it back and pour it on. Mm -hmm. okay. Why is that? Is it salt? Because, yeah, the, the salt is good. This isn't table salt. This is sea salt. Minerals. It's mineral rich. It's 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 and it's rich in, and, yeah, and it, it gives, it gives, it's minerals, microbes, and organic matter that make this happen. Okay, that convert non-living material into living material. That's enough water? That's enough water, so Share pour it up and yep. And it, it doesn't make the soil too saline. Oh, not if we're just putting 20 liters in. Not a, not a so that's just min the minerals in water, the sea, the sea yeah, yeah. solution yeah, in water. Right. That's what we're doing. And, and, uh, and, and because the minerals are held in the body of the organisms, they don't wash out in heavy rain in the tropics. They're, they're, that's how you build fertility in the tropics, is in the, either the plants or in the microorganisms. Otherwise, it just washes out in, in tropical rain. You, do, you deplete fertility in tropical rain if it's not living soil. And if you don't have ground covers, and if you don't have it held in, in uh, living living organisms, be it plants or being microbes, uh, you want a minimum of three liters of raw milk in each one, but you can use more. Right. And um, this we're not using anymore. What the min the, plus or the the sweetness? The, the molasses. 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 No, we got enough molasses in there. Now, if you ever open this to add kelp, for instance. Okay, when you open it to add kelp, then you mix a liter of molasses in warm water yeah. with the yeast yeah. and distribute it between the two buckets and then seal them. With the yeast or with the kelp? The yeast. Oh. You put the kelp in, yeah. you open it up, put the kelp in, yes. yeah. you stir it up, yes. the kelp in, stir yes. it up, yeah. and then you add molasses and yeast. Again. Just like uh -huh. we did again. Uh -huh. okay. uh -huh. So that, so that the, and the yeast gets rid of the oxygen in the in the barrel, mm -hmm. and that's called the headspace. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. So now this can this can bubble and at uh, different rates uh, and at different temperatures. So we want to leave it at what's called a headspace of about 150 mil on top of the barrel. So that's just.